What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Stay True Sunday Podcast with Cassette Coast, hey. Lucky Lou. We got shout out to OG today. What's up? Kelly Jean still out with the flu, but we still gonna keep it moving today, man. We got a we got a bunch of uh, H Town history we finna lay on lay out there oh, for yeah. y'all, man. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You already know. We got one of the uh, four fronts. What is it called? Pioneers. Pioneer. Pi- Pioneer. Pioneers of this H Town, especially when it comes to the Latin rap side of the H Town music. Yeah, yeah. it was it's- y'all was like the first Latin rap. Rappers in Houston, period, yeah. right? Yeah, well, there was other rappers, but we were the first one to actually put, put it out in the on store. The shelf, mm. you know what I'm saying? Like that was what our goal was. Yeah, that you know was aggravated. Saying? But there was, yeah, that was aggr- Actually, it was a uh, Southeast Latin sector, yeah. SLS, and uh, we were part of the South Park Coalition yeah. with uh, with SPC. with K Reno. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? Murder One, all the first generation South Park Coalition. So before we get into the history, let's first. Just introduce Shadow to the people. As okay. Tell them who you are, man. All yeah. right. So I am Shadow, the OG Shadow Ramirez. I have a twin brother named Grim. Uh, and basically in the hip hop culture, you know what I'm saying, Latin rap, we was the first ones to put it down like for everybody. You know what I'm saying? And we did this in a way so that everybody can come up from under us. South Park Mets can be one of them. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And and uh, we went and met two DJs, you know, Faletto and Balasso. And then uh, we had a partner named Mike, and we just came up, you know what I'm saying? And and uh, me and my brother, like my brother didn't even want to do it, but I made him do it, yeah. and we became like a household name, you know what I'm saying, down here in Houston. Yeah. So these days you produce, you engineer as well? Engineer, And produce, got a YouTube channel. And got a YouTube channel, huh. finally, you know what I'm saying? Because people do want to hear about this history, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like they, actually, I was sitting at my home, my partner's house, and his son was a, a, is a fan of mine. Or my brothers, and then uh, his his partner was like, "Oh man, South Park Mexican started and all and all this stuff." And I'm just sitting there drinking my you know my Bud Light, my Ultra. I'm like, "What the hell is he talking about?" <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and and my and my boys, my my friend's boy was telling him like, "Nah, man, you ain't never heard of Aggravated. You never heard of Most Hated. You know what I'm saying? They the ones that started." And he was like, "No, nah, I never heard it." So I didn't even say nothing to the little youngster. I went yeah. into my Instagram and I started writing these little stories on my Instagram. Yeah. And I did like 30 stories about the history starting from the first album. Yeah. Uh, uh, making the matter worse. And then I see my numbers kind of grow, you know what I'm saying, on that. Yeah. Uh-huh. And people started hitting me in the comments, you know, because ain't nobody was talking to me before that. You know, yeah. I was sending pictures of me and my <laughs> grandkids, and, you know what I'm saying, my wife, you know what I'm saying. Ain't nobody even holler at me, you know what I'm saying, who that? But then when I started doing the stories, like, oh, okay. And then I seen people just asking me to, you know, tell them more about the history. Mm-hmm. And so that's how it started. I did 30 stories on that. And then my brother was like, bro, let's, let's write a book. You yep. know what I'm saying? That's where it all started. Oh, see, I'm working YouTube. on a book. Working on a book. Starting to turn into a picture book more than anything. But yeah. Because a book is hard to put together, man. It's I remember when I was young, uh, that was the on, only song that made it like to my side of town was Grimm's I Am Your Future. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That yeah. I'm going to take you back. back. Uh, so, and I didn't even know who it was or what, but I was like, what the fuck is this? Is this yeah, your yeah, jam yeah, right yeah. here? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's all we would listen to was like Point Blank, uh, SPC, k mm-hmm. Reed. You know, street mm-hmm. military. We didn't listen to no radio shit. We just right, listened right. to straight underground. Yeah, shit. yeah. And then what? That's what it was. The Houston scene back in the days was like that. It's like you didn't even listen to the. If you did, you listened to KPFT. You know what I'm saying? Kids Jam or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think whenever I started making music, that's why I never gave a fuck about trying to make a radio song because I just knew what I was coming up at listening to, and I was like, that's what I wanted to be. I wanted to be known as one of those that's rappers. Dope. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, one of that's those. Dope underground rappers you know yeah. what i'm saying and that's yeah. what I, I now that i'm older i wish i would have fucking went <laughs> straight for the radio yeah, shit. No shit. you know what i'm saying but <laughs> back then i just didn't give a fuck about that i wanted to do what i what i came up listening to that's crazy it's funny you say i'm you i'm my future is because i'm your future is because like that wasn't our first album and me and Faletto, we got into a beat. You know, we all we all fight each other. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Every, mm-hmm. We got like seven members in our group, so we all fought each other or had an argument or whatever. And and after we did the first album, uh, Faletto took off back to Freeport with with Belasso, his cousin, where they come from. Mm-hmm. And my brother came, you know, to my house one time. I'm working on the Brown Cruise, which was supposed to be the second album, you know, his solo. Yeah. And he showed me that song, "I'm My Future." I'm mad in a mother lover because I ain't had nothing to do with that. Yeah. Who made you know the what beat? Saying? 
uh, Balasso found the uh, the sample. It was from Bob Marley, and I know the name, but I, it just losing my mind right now. But it was a Bob Marley sample. Balasso found it. Valetto put the drums and the beat behind it, and Klondike Cat did the uh, hook. Uh, yeah. yeah. If y'all never heard "I Am Your Future" by Grim, y'all go look it up. Yeah. yeah. It's forever gonna jam. That's an H Town classic for it's real. The, it's the coldest classic that I I didn't have nothing to do with. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, you know, what I'm saying it was it was part of our. They did think I had something to do because it was part of our crew. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so before we get too far out of. Uh, Talking about your Instagram with all the stories and everything and the pictures you were posting. What what's your Instagram? It is Shadow the OG at Shadow the OG. So y'all follow Shadow, so y'all can uh, read all the little stories he's talking yeah. about and and see some visuals to yeah. go along. That with made it as me well. go follow him, and I don't follow a lot of people. I had to go follow yeah. Shadow. I said, look at Shadow over here, <laughs> breaking down the history, man. Let me go hit that follow button, man. Yeah, yeah. man. <laughs> That's what happened, man. I tripped out, man. And now I don't really do the stories. My brother, actually, my brother called me. He was like, hey, man. <laughs> Say, man, we're trying to do this book, man. You got to stop putting this out for free. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was like, you know. But I that's mean, promotion for the book. And that's what I told him. I said, well, okay, I'll stop at 30 stories. And then uh, it just jumped up to the YouTube, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying, thing. People were hitting me in the comments. They were like, man, you should do visuals. But everybody got, and I you know, want to be an you know, advice giver. Right. You know what I'm saying, when you're doing stuff. And it's cool. I accept it. You know what I'm saying? I love it. You know what I'm saying? Because it does help me in a way. I wouldn't have done the YouTube thing if it wasn't for some of the comments telling me, hey, man, put some visuals to it. Yeah. Yeah. It's and a new stuff, world, yeah. man. Yeah. yeah, man. I'm going to be 50. This year, man, February 28th, my brother and I go yeah, back. And I don't have a problem saying that. You, you know got to be able, to, if you want to still be able to be carve a way out in this space, you have to change with the times. You can't still be trying to do the things we were doing back in late 90s and early 2000s or you just going to lose. Mm. You yeah, gotta, you can't go to the lowrider shows like we did back in the days <laughs> at the flea markets because they out there, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it ain't the same scene. I've been, I've been, you know, it's, it's pocos, pero locos, you know what I'm saying? But... I mean, it's still there, you know what I'm saying? The scene's still there, but you're right, the, the time has definitely changed. Yeah, to a, like to I was a telling you earlier, it's world. not about the sales no more, it's about views. Yeah, yeah, it ain't even about sales, sound scans, nothing like Straight that. Views. Remember? Now they're gonna start uh, counting their your YouTube views as streams, yep. you know what I'm saying? Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like a scan. Yeah. yeah. Damn. See, that's 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 real. That's a, like, I remember back in the days, and you was in, you was there, and you was there. We used to travel. We used to literally had to get in the car, put up uh, everything in the back of the trunk, mm -hmm. and go to every one stop, every com you know store. Hey, but that shit was fun though. You know, yeah. you know what I'm saying. And you would do it on consignment. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. You signed some stuff, and then you had, and you knew who the characters were. You knew who to deal with, who not to deal with, and everybody would help each other out, and everybody would go. In fact, we would all go with different crews, and we would just branch out like okay you go over there and i would go over there and then we would hit we took over texas man yeah. basically all yeah. of us yeah and we used to, we used to do that so frequently that yeah we went out to these different record stores and we had the relationships with the people there but not only that the traveling to these cities yeah we knew what gas stations yeah. to stop at yeah. Yeah. we knew what sonic restaurants in what neighborhood yeah. to go to yeah we would pull up pop trunk and it was and just Sell out the trunk. Sell out the trunk. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I remember when I first started, I didn't even have a rapper. I didn't have a rapper at all. And see, Carlos did the same thing I did. I, I used to make beats, and I would put comedians on them, like Richard Pryor and yeah. Flip Wilson. And then when I would make the beat, I would get my ride, and I'd go to the edge of Houston, and I'd stop at every gas station, mm. and I'd bump my ride. And mainly, mainly blacks would listen to it and they'd hear it. And they're like, man, what you jamming? And I said, man, I'm jamming it. And, you, know, and you had to walk in and you show it to and give it to them. And then they would buy it for like $5 a cassette. Yeah. With you know the comedian saying? on it. <clears throat> With the comedian on yeah. it. Yeah. Yes, sir. And, 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 you know, then, you know, I, I was like, man, you know, I, I ain't got no rapper, man. Yeah. I ain't no rapper. And then uh, Kay Reno is the one that told me, you need a rapper, man. And I was like, the only person I know that rhymes is my brother, but he's in the rock and roll. You don't want to do this shit. Mm. So I made him do it. You know what and what was his first song? Uh, I, his first song was a, a song called So Much Violence and Killing the Thrill of the Women, How They Living. That's that's the first line, but it's called Too Much Violence. Too Much Violence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was his first one. And I think he was doing it. He went, K. Reno used to have this room where they were had a podium and everybody would write, you know, they sit at desk. That's what I remember. Uh, and, and I guess they were sitting around writing to this song, Point Blank. 
uh, had my brother come on uh, slip into a coma. Yeah, mm. and that was like and that the was first time classic. Yeah, bro. and now in fact, just a little while ago, a couple of weeks, uh, it was at Point Blank's birthday bash, and my brother is living in Dallas, and he wanted my brother to perform it. Mm. And my brother was like, "Man, I can't make it." So they were like, well, what about Shadow? Can he do you? I was like, <laughs> so I went and did the show, and I did the verse, but I had the I had my phone, you know, like, oh, I don't okay. know. That's so I'm funny. rapping, you know what I'm saying? I got the phone with the yeah, lyrics, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But there was the only way that I felt that I could, you know, hit all yeah. the words right, you yeah. know what I'm saying, and, and and make it make it live. But that was the first one that got him like known as far as like rap a lot. Even though we work with the terrorists, even though we work with Dopey, and we came up with Gangsta Nip, and that was all through rap a lot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So how did y'all get with Jam Down? That wasn't the first record company y'all with though, right? No, who, no. Well, who we put started out the first, the first most hated in the stores. What it, com- what company was that? The the first most hated, in, the most hated was Jam Down. Uh, uh, aggravated, aggravated, aggravated was uh, I want to say it was Big Boy or Bad Boy Entertainment, uh, and and it was Filetto's uh. Uncle John, John Hernandez. Oh, okay. And he's the, he was the CEO. He was the money man behind the whole aggravated thing. Mm. And but but he made a huge mistake because he didn't sign anybody for that first album. Oh. And that album, like like you said, it, it with that Army Future, it blew the fuck up. Like it it spread like a wildfire. And and so for the second album, he decided to get everybody to sign a contract. Well, they made a deal. Everybody, I wasn't in that group, which was funny as shit to me because they were like crabs in the bucket. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And no, and, and they made a deal. Filetto had, I remember meeting, because they used to have meetings every Tuesday. And they said, nobody signed that contract. Nobody signed. We're going to sign it together. And what happened was Slinky ended up signing it at the the Papa's Barbecue, but it used to be called something else, but he signed it. And when Filetto found out that he had signed it, oh my God, he was pissed. So the contract that Filetto had, I remember pulling up, he had burnt it. He had burnt it to a crisp. Why he didn't want to sign the contract? Because he he, he just, he was just mad. I don't know. That, that's, that'd probably be a question you have to ask him because... Yeah. He he wanted to do it, but he wanted to do it collective, like as a as a. It was whole. his uncle, though, right? It was his uncle, and he didn't want to sign the contract. I, it could have been some, you know, between them, you know, what I'm saying, mm-hmm. and, and he didn't like about it. Maybe it was something he ripped. Like I said, uh, there probably wasn't no money involved. Probably wasn't no money involved. You know, what <laughs> saying? like sign this, you ain't getting no money. And, and I remember, and I remember going, and Lord Loco was with them, and they were on the porch wherever they were at. You know, what I'm saying, and uh, it was on Newport Street, man. It was a, a T T's house. Mm-hmm. You know? Uh, and anyway, we was going on, and 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 <laughs> when I'm pulling up, he's he's lighting the, you know, I said, what the, he's lighting the contract, and I get there, and by the time I tell him, what's going on, man? Hey, man, Slinky signed the contract, and I'm cracking up, you know what I'm saying? John, here comes John Hernandez, he come to pick up the contract, and and the corner now there's just a corner of it, you know, what I'm saying? still still <laughs> smoldering, and and he had threw it on the ground, and then uh, John, I remember he he saw it, he's like, oh man, my contract, and it wasn't because he had burned it, he kept saying it costs a lot of money, yeah, yeah, to pay to, a lawyer to, for yeah, that, to to you know have that written up, you know what I mean? And he grabbed that little piece of corner and he dusted it off and he took it with him, and that was the end of that, you know what I'm saying? They, they didn't sign that contract, and they had to. Uh, uh, that's when. Uh, Troublemaker ended up going with Slinky, yeah, and they did Faggervated. We call it Faggervated because it was the, <laughs> the second Aggravated. It's like yeah. Menudo, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. the, yeah so so they started doing Faggervated. And remember, I wasn't part of Aggravated. <laughs> I wasn't part of Aggravated, but I was working on the Brown Recluse for my brother. So I had already about 20 beats done. Okay. And they wanted to put out an album before Faggervated. So my brother came to me, hey, man, you know what? Uh, can you, you know, Filetto and them, y'all, you know, you and Filetto just, you know, squash the beef, man, let's finish this album because we want to do it before them. And we did, you know what I'm saying? We hugged it out. We, you know, said, come on, let's do this, you know what I'm saying? Mm. And the first song we worked on together was uh, uh, Free World. And we did that together. And we went, got in the booth and we got it all done. And, and we did the whole album. to. And the, and the reason why they called it The Most Hated is because the next album I found out uh, was going to be called Aggravated The Most Hated. Mm. And so they, uh, Patrick Lewis from yeah. Uh, how did he hear about it? From so Jam he, Down? so he heard. See, we were they was recording that Jam Down already. Yeah. You know, what I'm saying as aggravated. So he knew of them. Oh, okay. Okay. And it's right there on you know Telephone Road. You know, what I'm saying. And when when he found out what had happened, uh, they went to him. He said, "You know what? If y'all can give me the same intensity as that first album, I'll sign you guys 
y'all, but y'all can't use that name. Mm-hmm. So they went to the Hutex. I remember this shit. They were at the Hutex, and that's when they said, well, the next group is going to be the most hated because that was going to be the name of the album. Yeah, yeah. Chess Move. Yeah. And I, and I was like, that's dope. Like, to me, when I heard that name, the most hated, I was in. Yeah. I was in because I was already feeling like I was the most hated because ain't nobody want to fuck with me because they were doing all that shit. I was hurt. I ain't gonna lie. I yeah. was mad. I told them all. I said, man, fuck all y'all. Y'all gonna do that shit. I'm gonna come out with Grimm's next album. We're gonna squash that shit because mm. Grimm is my shit. Even though we weren't together, whatever my brother was doing, I was a part of. And that's why people think that I was part of Aggravated because I was around it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I was there when he did anything. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So that was funny as shit, though, man. I was, it was live. It was live. I'll do it again. So then, and that the most hated album came out under Jam Down. Yep. And then right after that is when Hillwood SPM came out. At, right after that. No, Hillwood came in during the aggravated. In fact, Carlos wanted to be an aggravated member. He got voted out. Yeah. He was an aggravated member for one weekend <laughs> in Dallas, and but he was selling all his shit. You know, I wasn't with them. Remember, I've heard. I I would go to their meetings. They wouldn't even let me in the meeting because I wasn't in the you know part of the group. Damn. But they went to Dallas on one weekend, and when they came back, Trub was like, man, you know what I'm saying? Well, Seth Paul, he's just selling his stuff. He wasn't, you know, promoting our stuff. Yeah. And, and the Hillwood, the Hillwood album is what he was selling at the mm-hmm. time. So I remember that Tuesday, they were coming, and then uh, they had broke up. They were already tripping, you know what I'm saying? And, I mean, they were already going through that stuff. And I was working on the Warriors song, and he was coming to find out if he was going to be an aggravated member or not. Yeah. And he stepped in my car, and he was like, man, what's that jamming? You know what I'm saying? He started writing MC Torture, Rhyme Sorcerer. I was like, dude, if I ever do this song, I'm going to get you on it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So he, he was, we did that long before. And then he and then he found out that he wasn't going to be in an aggravated group. So he had walked to my brother's house. It was on Moline, and he, and he left, and he, and he looked kind of mad, but I figured... Really, they told him, look, it's he left because the meeting. He left the meeting. Well, he wasn't in the meeting either. They yeah. were they voted in the meeting. Then he was outside with me. Oh, okay. So when they came out and they told him, hey man, uh, uh, we don't think it's you, you didn't know, make the cut. Yeah, you didn't make the cut. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and it wasn't that. My brother is gonna always say that he told Carlos, look, you're better off on your own. Yeah. You know, which is the truth. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And which was what happened. And Carlos went and started doing. And then he did Hustle Town. And Faletto worked with him on Hustle Town. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then after Hustle Town is when we saw each other at Jam Down and we was work we had just we already had done the most hated album. We were working on the next on whatever. Yeah. We were on tour with two uh, with Kiki as a matter of fact. Yeah. Cause we were label mates. And he just dropped Don't Mess with Texas. And uh Don't Mess with Texas was that throw he drop? Oh. Yeah, he had just dropped Don't Mess with Texas and we were on that tour. That's yeah. right, South Side. Yeah. And then Carlos came in to Jam Down, and he was like, uh, he told Patrick Lewis, I'm going to have the biggest record company in Texas. And Patrick Lewis laughed at him. He says, oh, man, come on, Carlos, you're nothing but a comedian rapper. <laughs> and that day, I left with Carlos. Because you that, believed him or what? No, nah, yeah, I think so. I, because he was he was already coming up, man. He, by he that had time, already dropped the... Then Hillwood he, was hot in the street. Hillwood was hot yeah. in the street. He already... Yeah. He already with the, with the, the, you know, Revenge. Yeah. Mm. And then he dropped Hustle Town, and he was about to do the video to Merry Go Round. Yeah. Okay? And he was he was hot. Yeah. You know, and, we, and as most hated, we had not... We were... I guess we weren't just as hot. You know, I didn't feel like it. Because it was, it was starting to dismantle you mm. know what i'm saying and when he came in i, I had just shown that same song to ike that morning and my brother high so high i got this song it's called high so high high so high please don't blow my high told ike went to see my brother told my brother well i seen carlos that same day at jam down and i seen what he said and i went outside and he and showed said, him the beat and i showed him the beat and i said hey man i got this song it's got a hook check it out you know what i'm saying and all right, all right, meet me at the compound. That's what it was called back then. It wasn't the jar. So I met him over there by back of the, uh, what was it, the uh, you know, uh, Salvation oh, was, Army yeah, right. on, on, on Center Street. And I sat there and I gave him three songs for $1,000. He never used the other two. He just used High So High. Hmm. Dun, and, dun, 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 yep. dun, 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 dun. High So High. And hey, I'll never did he ever it. get the sample cleared? Or? Yeah, $11,000. Oh, cost, cost us $11,000. To clear the sample. To clear the sample. Mm. You know Damn. So we got that done. And then uh, we did that song in one week. 
So remember, I had just showed my brother and Ike Man that song the beginning of last week. Yeah. So on Thursday, <laughs> they yeah, heard like, the I song. Want that oh, they heard <laughs> no, it on the radio. Yeah, homie, Mo- homie Marco had you know because we went to a, a club AM. Remember club AM? Yeah, 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 yeah. We went in, and uh, Kool Aid was DJing that night, and yeah. Carlos was like, "Okay, we had just finished a song." You know, Marilyn had Marilyn Hodges. You seen say so? I think her name is Hodge. I'm sorry, Marilyn. I'm sorry. But she sang the hook. When we finished it, I had a good mix on it. He said, man, let's go to Club AM. Let's go check it. Let's try it out. So we went, took it to Kool-Aid, and he put it on, and, and they was vibing to it. Yeah. Next morning, it was on a Thursday, because it was a Wednesday. They used to have yeah. uh, Next morning, uh, uh, I'm on my way to the compound, and I hear at the very end, homie Marco saying, oh, you hear this new song by South Park Mexican? Oh, you didn't hear it? Here it goes again. And they played it back to back. I'm like, oh. Yeah, I'm, he was dropping homie Marco them racks. He yeah, was, he was yeah. He was doing that payola. He was doing that payola. You know what I'm saying? If y'all don't know what payola is, look it up in the dictionary. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's big in the industry, especially back then. Yeah, but back then. And then, and then that radio station was like a, a Hispanic radio station. Mm-hmm. 1007. Yeah. The they, house party. Yeah, it was all Mexican D. DJs and yeah. Mexican program directors. So oh, they, they loved Carlos. Yeah. yeah. They you know what I'm saying? So they showed a lot of love and when that song hit, it, so it, the song it, blew it, up and then up. and then Grim and Ike like, what's up? Yo, man, I remember <laughs> that day uh, I had a rush to Filetto's because my NPC was at Filetto's and I wanted to get all my shit because I knew they were going to be mad at me. Remember, yeah. we all been through a lot of stuff in the most hated and aggravated things so we used to fight, argue and you know, cheat each other. You know yeah, what I'm saying? They're like, oh, you oh know, yeah. They the said, oh, here right we here. go, man. You know, <laughs> you know, damn, Shadow, you know, again, you know what I'm saying? And and then, yeah, man, if he was mad. I ain't gonna lie. Ike, man, was like, that's messed up. You know what I'm saying? I said, nah, man. And he paid me. The first person to pay me, you know what I'm saying? Said, I'm a producer. You know what I'm saying? You ain't gonna, I ain't gonna do stuff for free. Yeah. And, you know, Carlos paid like his way. Nobody was gonna make that song like that. Yeah. Carlos was gonna be. If it would have gave to Ike, man, it wouldn't have been the high so high that it turned out to be. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No way. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And I knew when I knew it was a hit is when I went to the Robert Gilliman yeah. from mm-hmm. Southwest, gave us some tickets to the Astro to Astros. And I think it was just turned mid and made. Yeah. And I took my son with me. My son was eight years old, mm-hmm. Danny. And uh we were sitting in the Crawford section and Jose Lima comes up. Uh, rest in peace, Jose Lima. He used to be one of our pitchers. And then he came up, and it's Jose Lima. And in the background, dun, 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 dun. No oh, shit. Damn. Yeah, dude, I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, and then my son, he's seen, you know, he got, he's out there with his friends. And dad, he looks back, dad, they're playing your song. Uh, <laughs> but all the fans are probably thinking that's my favorite song the whole fucking right. They don't know yeah, I just, you know, know that I produced it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I was like, and to me. That paid me more than I ever made yeah. with that song. Just yeah, the fact that my son was just like excited, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And like, proud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. that was cool as fuck. Thanks, thanks for Robert Gilliman for doing that though. But that was dope. Yeah, that was dope. As so, fuck. so and then so you want to you want to talk about the story how how you uh, took one of Ike's beats again and did okay the same so <laughs> yeah so then yeah get so to fast that. forward so the song high so high blows up you know what I'm saying the money start coming in you know what yeah I'm now, now now I'm VIP everywhere you know what I'm saying I used to still go and, and go to the clubs and I they used to get mad at me because I go and I was one of those guys still be in the crowd still pay the fucking way get in. And I was like, you know, doing my thing. The hot so hot was a shit, man. I was like, damn, this is lovely. And then so I started doing more beats. I started getting into it. And then I started being more of a producer slash engineer. And I was chief producer at Dope House. And I was doing everything. And Big Burt was there and everybody. And, you know, Ike Man and them, they, you know, this is years later, right? Yeah, this is 10, 10, Did, no, not that many years later. It was probably... That was probably like 98, 99, 98. and this is like 2000, 2001. Maybe, maybe, yeah. Okay, I, I, I get back about 2000. It was probably 2000, yeah. And then, and then uh, Ike Man started the shut them down thing. In 2000, in, in right? In 2000. Yeah, and so I, this was 2000. So I went and I started, I went to go see Ike Man, you know what I'm saying? Hey, man, you burn me on that high so high, man, give me a beat, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, man, I made this beat today. And I needed to pay my rent. Yeah. So I showed him this beat that I had. And it was slumping, man. You know what I'm saying? He was like, okay. And D-Town was like, okay, you ain't going to do this like that last time. And I was like, nah, <laughs> man, shit. So he paid me. Paid me $1,200. And then I went, you know what I'm saying? I went to, you know, uh, Dope House. Well, back that time, I went back to the compound with Dope House. And I go get the beat. 
Go get the masters on that. Remember we used to have yeah. that? And I'll get there, and lo and behold, I get there, and I'm listening, and I hear my beat. And I'm like, hold up, hold up, what the fuck? And I hear Bash, and I hear, I didn't know you, I didn't know you at the time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I seen Bash, and I seen Bert, and they were all, man, that bitch is jamming, you know what I'm saying? And it was like, and it's my beat, and, they have, and Bash had put a verse on it. And I was looking, I was like, oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go again. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Damn. So I listened to it, and then you had put, you had already put your and my verse, verse on was it. already on it. It was it, already yeah. on it. It was done. It was like, they were already, okay. We just need Carlos's verse. You know, it's a hit. This is a hit. It's a hit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm like, what? And it, and it ended up being follow my lead. Follow my lead. Uh. Follow my lead. Uh. Mayday, mayday. <laughs> and I was like, man, dude. I was like, fuck. What am I gonna do, man? I was in this predicament again. I was like, shit. So I and and I remember Carlos had some executives from there from from another record. I don't know if it was Universal or Atlantic, or whatever. And I was like, I, they stopped playing it, and big fat ass Bert, you know what I'm saying? Well, I call him fat ass, you know what I'm saying? But Bert, you know, I love him to death. He's the one that showed Bash and y'all that beat. Yeah. And he was like, oh, we got this and everything, and y'all did it. So I go, Carlos, I pull Carlos aside to say, man, I just sold that beat like today, $1,200, dude. And he asked me straight up, he goes, well, where'd you make it? And I was like, uh, I made it here because that's where my equipment was. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, well, if you made it here, then 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 it stays here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, and the executives were right there in the room, and I wanted to, you know, clown this motherfucker. I was like, nah, hell no. Nah. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you want it, you gotta pay for it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So at least give me the twelve hundred so I can go pay D Town back. Yeah. I don't have it. Mm-hmm. I'm yeah. trying to pay my rent. And I'm trying to pay my you know bills. So we we on we get we almost get out get into it on the dock, you know what I'm saying? And he was like, No, it's gonna be all right, okay, you know what I'm saying? And really he gave me fifteen, you know what I'm saying? So he paid like a like he weighed, you know what I'm saying? So he gave me the money. But honestly, when I heard the verb, when I heard your verse, because I didn't I didn't know who you were at yeah, that, the time. That was my first time actually ever recording at Dope House. Like I so had been to, I, I had been to Dope House probably like one or two times, but I had never been like in the studio booth. Like I had been like outside or like on the dock. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? With other people there. Hanging but out. Hanging you out. With Charles Chavez. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so I had, I went over there with Charles Chavez before. Right. But this time Bert picked me up from Latium and drove me to Dope House. Uh, and we were okay. in so now I'm like in the studio, you know what I'm saying? Smoking with Bash and it's the first time I had ever met Bash. I'd never even heard of Bash. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. But I heard this beat playing and Bert was like, Yo, uh Bash, you should put Lucky on this track. And Bash was like, man, I already got two verses on here, and Carlos yeah. finna get on here, so there ain't no room. Yeah. So I was like, it's all good, and I just started freestyling. And and remember, I'm 17 years old, fresh from, I'm like, I'm young, you know what I'm saying? So I had a whole different flow, you know what yeah. I'm saying? My yeah. my flow and my freestyle was different than, say, Everybody like, else. the most hated or aggravated right. or Carlos or anything. Storytelling. You, you weren't storytelling, you were flowing. Straight flowing, H-Town shit, screw yeah. tape, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, Straight yeah. Straight H-Town screw tape yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, Bash had never heard no shit like that because he's from California. So right. when he came to here, all he heard was like the older Mexican rappers. Right. He had never heard a, a young Mexican rapper fresh from the street. You know what right. I'm saying? Right. So when he heard me freestyle, he stopped what he was doing. And he was like, hey, go in the booth and record that, which you just did. Okay. And then I went in there and I couldn't do what I just did. I spit another freestyle. Right. I think I, I probably punched in. But yeah, that whole verse was like a freestyle. I was just... No shit. Yeah, I was. Just, I never knew. Yeah, that. I was. I punched in. I probably punched in a couple times, but yeah, I was just in there flowing. You know what I'm no saying? No shit, <laughs> damn. <laughs> well, see, when I heard it, when I heard it, when I finally heard it, I, I took time to listen to it, and that's what made me be like, "Nah, I ain't touching that," yeah. because your flow was totally different from everybody else's, and it was the flow that that song needed. Yeah. I think. So when I heard it, I was like, "Oh well, shit." I mean, I can't do that. I'm not gonna take him off of it. Who are you again? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, who's, you know what I'm saying? Where did he, who's this dude? And and yeah, when I heard it, I was like, oh shit, we gotta figure something out, man. That bitch was just rolling. Yeah, you know what I'm saying that shit was flowing like a motherfucker. Follow my lead, uh. Yeah, I love that song, man. To and, this day, and I didn't even know that was going on SPM's album. I thought it was Bash's song. You know what I'm saying? Right, Cause right. He was talking about he had two verses on it, so I didn't even know. Later on, like a 
few weeks later, I heard that they're like, Charles told me, he was like, yo, you know you made it on Carlos's album. And they're like, you got a check waiting for you over there. You got to go to Dope House to pick up a check. Huh. And I was like, what? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they gave me a check to go freestyle, man. You know what I'm saying? And you were 17. Yeah. They were like, I was like, oh, man, it's on. It I'm came from the road call on 97.9 <laughs> to getting checks. And yeah, that was the first time, you know what I'm saying, I had ever got paid. To, to be honest that. with you, that album is the Purity album, and, and, and that album was a, a bunch of songs that Carlos wasn't going to use for a lot, any album, this next album. But he had went to Universal and he wanted a label deal. He wanted a Master P deal. Yeah. Where he, he didn't want an artist deal only. So he had, he knew I had these songs, you know what I'm saying? And it was called The Purest of Dope at first. And it didn't have You Know My Name on it. It just had all those songs. Yeah. And that was one of the songs on there. And I was actually putting it together for a lowrider show. And we were going to press up like 2,500 copies. And it was going to be like a mixtape. Right. And we were going to make a quick 50 Gs on that. You know, 25 yeah. Gs. You know, because when we would do shows, you press up 2,500 copies. And you would go and sell, sell them, them for $10 yeah. or $15. And you sell them all. Man, you come home with 30 racks. You know what I mean? So that's what I, we was trying to do. But then he went to uh, uh, do a meeting with uh, Universal, Universal, which was Monty and, and Monty Littman and, and and them them boys, and he called me and he says, "Hey man, that that Pierce of the Dope man sent it to me." So I sent it on a, on a flight at Southwest. I'll never forget it. We got it on a red eye. I sent it on a red eye, and it, and it got to Universal. And when that's the first album that was the. Where he signed with Universal, yeah. it was Purity, and then it was Thomas Money. And then they heard that Thomas. lucky flow on there, man. You know what I'm saying? They heard that lucky saying. flow. They said we gotta sign this boy, man. Yeah, yeah. So you know what I'm saying? It hey, was but dope. that's crazy how you had to fly it on an airplane. You couldn't just send Remember, it through a yeah, transfer. Yeah, yeah. You couldn't just had, email it back then. You couldn't you know what just saying? email it. It had now its own little. Just send an email. Had its own little chair. You know, it had its own little seat. It was by its own little deck. Nah, I, they, they, I just took it over there, and they, and they and it was on the Southwest flight, and uh, Sylvia. You know, said she got it. They went into the thing, and I remember about two days later, uh, she said that they had made, you know, uh, penciled out or inked out a deal, and that was going to be the first album. It wasn't supposed to be that album. They wanted the third wish. Yeah. And and then Carl's like, nah, y'all can't have that. So then we did the Purity album, and that song made it. I was so glad because um, Happy had made a, another song on that song, and Follow My Lead was the parking lot banger. Cause I, I like I never wanted to have radio songs like yeah. I, that's how we came up. Mm -hmm. So when I when I would go to the shows or whatever, and you go in the parking lot, man, that follow my lead was knocking in the yeah. parking lot. Mm -hmm. I remember sitting with Hat one time. He's like, man, that bitch is knocking. I said, man, your shit's jamming too, though. You know what I'm saying, man? But that motherfucker was knocking, and it felt good for her. Someone like Happy, who yeah, did how yeah. you do that there? You know, let me know like, damn, that bitch is knocking. How did how did Ike Man react to you? Taking a beat from him for a second time. For the, oh, it's still to this day, man. To oh yeah, day, to this day, it, you know, it always comes up. Uh, the high so high, you know, it, you know. In fact, it was funny because uh, uh, just recently we did the Day of Unity uh, thing, and and some thing happened with you know Chinese and all the boys. But but Carlos was on the phone with a uh, 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 Los, and he even made a reference to that. He goes, "Come on, Los." Don't pull the high so high again, you know what I'm saying? Let me in, let me in, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, damn, man, that's always going to be one of them things. But yeah. for that being a sec the second song, I ain't going to lie. Even though uh, I paid, you know, uh, uh, D-Town back, you know what I'm saying? Ooh, Shadow, God, uh, <laughs> again, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, and I never really, I made, a, I, I, met, I made other songs for him and I worked with him on other albums, but he says that I, I got him. He said, I got, you got me twice. I said, no, nah, man, I got you once. <laughs> Damn, bro. Hey, but but Ike and them had some jamming-ass music, too. Uh, mm -hmm. Like the X-Ray and Filetto album they put out. Mafioso. Yeah, you know all that shit. That, the I-45 to I the Bellway. Hey, that, that shit was jamming. Late, lately. Yeah, they had I've a whole been thinking bunch of about a major. Oh, yeah. Yeah. One of my favorite songs on that most hated album was that uh, These Are the Stories of the Mad Man, Ike, Ike Man. Man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Ike Man, uh, to be honest with you, Ike Man uh, couldn't rap like at all. You know what I'm saying? When he joined the group, because he was, uh, he was our weed connect. You know what I'm saying? He was just a partner. I grew up with Ike Man since I was like 10 years old. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And uh, so he would just uh, hang around. And and that that song in particular you're talking about, yeah. I remember sitting down. He's like, man, I gotta go in the booth tomorrow, man. I can't, I, you know, I don't know, you know, I can't cast the one. Mm -hmm. I spent the night with him that whole night, man. I said, you gonna get it, we gonna get it, we gonna make sure you get it. 
and he finally got it, man, right before we had to go in the booth. Mark Kidney was the engineer, and he had, instead of doing it line for line, like a, like you would do an easy e like, you yeah, know, right. it, it, he, he actually spit the whole thing, and, and, and it came out dope as well. I told man, that's, that's going to be probably one of your best songs, you know what I'm saying? But then, the first verse that I heard, Ike Man was on Lil Kiki's uh, album, the... What song? The... They went there. Kiki worked on a lot of our songs. The, it was Carlos and Ike Man on there. I, I think he said it's that Southeast Mexican with commission on his necklace. Oh, okay. And yeah, it had 3-2 yeah, yeah. on there, too. 3-2, yeah. yeah. Lil Kiki, SP, and Ike. That was for the uh, commission album. Nah, it was no. on the... Uh, uh, what was it? It was all a dream. Oh, okay. It was all a dream album. Oh, the, my God. Yeah, Kiki's second album. Yeah, you know, Screw was there at that time when he was doing that album. You know what I'm saying? That's when Screw came and started doing the All Work, No Play. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right about that same time. Right that's right before he passed. I remember meeting Screw a bunch of times, man. He was always linked out Yeah, I seen him. Yeah, I met Screw one time. It was at Club AM. At yeah. Club AM, him, uh, Point Blank. Ice T was there. Ice T was doing a show. He, he Ice T did the show. He didn't have no music playing. He was on stage with a pinstripe suit on. Matter of fact, I think the most hated was there too. They, they, I, I, the we did a hated, show. Yeah. We did do a show with with, with Ice T. Yeah. Probably was that show. Yeah, I the that. most hated was there, and uh, Ice T was on stage with a pinstripe suit, and he did the show with no beat. He was just talking, just spitting game up there with no what? beat. Yeah, what? I, could I was tell like. Her? He wasn't rapping. He was just like talking oh, okay. like some pimp shit. You know what I'm saying? Well, well, there's there's a certain type of talk. They call it uh, golly, I just saw a documentary on that. And base, it's like a Dolomite. What they yeah, do is they, yeah, is they, exactly. and they, and they, oh man, I know what the name of it. But anyway, yeah, it was like they rhyming, shit. but they talking shit. Yeah, I was like, yeah. well, that was the flyest shit I had ever seen. I was like, I could, I had never seen no shit like that. It was like a real pimp on stage, yeah, <laughs> just yeah. on a pinstripe yeah. suit, a hat, you know what I'm saying, and just talking, just spitting game. Yeah, was that, it music though? No music. No, no. These no are music. They would tell stories, and they would be rhyming, and it's like if you ever listen to Dolomite, you know what I'm saying, and he's the one that kind or, of like you know how the pimps be talking where yeah. they just be. Rhyming and saying some fly shit yeah. that's what he was doing he was on stage and like just talking you know what I'm saying yeah they call it something and I and I know it man it's just like I know that sample to the uh, like you know that song um, I'm Your Future but yeah it's it's a certain way that they talk pimps talk yeah. you know what I'm saying and and they just rhyme and that's probably what he was doing you know yeah. what I'm saying at, at that, that time thing. I was probably about 15 years old 15 or 16 uh me and my boy, uh, we had a blunt, and we t we told Screw, yo, Screw, what's up, man? You want to smoke this blunt with us? He was like, yeah, come on. Man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The VIP right there, we were smoking with him. We was like, man, we smoking with Screw. Man, we hung around Screw. My brother actually lived right behind Screw you know, on Joplin. He lived on Green Downs whenever he had uh, got raided, and uh, the cops thought he was selling yeah. and stuff. Well, my brother lived right behind him, and we hung around during the C-Note, and we, we was the Mexicans, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? But... I mean, we didn't know he was gonna be a who he is now. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I mean, it was, like you said, we used to just do things just to do it. It wasn't about money. It was just about trying to rap and be on the scene. You know what I mean? Just going, mm -hmm. you know, going hard. And, and and so my brother really never got you know on any of the thing because they my, like you said they didn't have my brother didn't have that kind of flow he wasn't doing like a the, the he was doing story. like the freestyle flow right and we were sitting in there and Kiki and Bird and and, and oh I'll so y'all would see them flowing yeah we yeah. were sitting I remember his his uh, turntables were sitting on codeine uh, uh, like the the. Cases? Boxes, yeah, the cases that they would, you know what I'm saying? And I was like, what the, heck? you know what I'm saying? But that, I remember that shit. And he yeah, had, so his turntables were sitting on codeine crates. Crates. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and C Note or whoever was back there at the time, man, you know, see if I'm telling the truth, you know what I'm saying? But back in the day, and he had a little setup, and uh, we used to go back all the time. And, and we never really got on, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I don't know why, but we didn't. But that's why uh, he did that in front of the, the I'm Your Future screw. That's why he said, man, what's up, Filetto? Uh, yeah, what's I heard up? That. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Come on, Grim. Because, you know, that's they asked him. To, he, that was the first time he did an intro for anybody that I know of. Hmm. You know what was saying? that beat playing? Because that beat right there went hard. That was the the the, the, the I'm Your Future Oh, beat. it's the very beginning, the, the intro. The very beginning very of the intro, yeah. yeah. Before the he, beat he, drops. He, And then he didn't say Filetto. He said Fierro. Yeah. You know, because he was... He yeah. was leaked out, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And I remember Filetto had to fix that somehow. I don't even know how he fixed it, but he fixed it. But, yeah, man, it was a big deal. We all hung out. Then we became label mates when he did go to shut him down. He was working with All, all Work and No Play. So we hung out with him there. Never took pictures of him. Then we just chilled out. And then... 
he was supposed to uh, work out a deal with with Carlos, and he was going to do the Scrooge at the dope house. Mm. And the day that they were, the night before uh, he died, they were talking to him and doing it. I remember because I didn't go to the meeting, but we were like, you know, Carlos was like, "Hey, we got, he's, he's down. We're gonna make a little room for him. And everything we're gonna have for Scrooge and everything's going down." And that very next day is when he passed. Yeah, mm. you know, we heard about it, we're like what? You know, what I'm saying so. Do you remember when we used to do the Scrooge uh, every Wednesday at Dope House? Yeah, and you barbecue. You know, as a matter of fact, I got a song uh, that I did, and I barely found. It's with Ronnie Spencer, and it's with Big Mo, and it's called "I Miss You." Screw. Wow. And and you know the 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 song "My Life" on on the Hustle Town. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The beat for "My Life" is the beat that's underneath it. Okay, but here it goes. You know, you know how everything happens. Pete Camarillo, Celos, and them—they had that pre-production room. Yeah. Okay, and that that computer got stole, and when that computer got jacked from mm-hmm. the dope house, mm-hmm. that song went with it. Yeah. Well, here it is, ten, twenty years later, and I'm going on YouTube, and I hear the damn yeah. song, and oh. it was be- it was off Beltway Eight. Now I don't know. If you know, he got a hold of, you know, that song through Robert Gillum with all the Southwest, you know, collapse and all that stuff. I don't know how he got a hold of it. And I'm uh, not going to go there was after a, Do you remember when me and Lil Kiki was freestyling there? Yeah. Me and Lil Kiki was uh, freestyling for like 10, 15 minutes at a, at a Scrooston one day uh, on one of them Wednesdays when we'd had the Scrooston meetings. And I don't know whatever happened to that. I never it heard. Probably it probably fell into that, 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 uh, that same, you know, computer. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Man. And be, believe it or not. That that Ronnie Spencer, I got it too. Ronnie Spencer and the uh, uh, the Big Mo song was a freestyle. It's them singing together, and the whole time it's just singing on top of that beat. Yeah. And I recorded. It was in that room. In fact, in the very back, because we have people there would come. You can hear people clapping. Yeah. They're like you know, they're clapping. And, and I finally got a hold of the original. See, I got the original version. He had the screw version, so I got the original version. Right. And I finally found it, right? And so now I'm putting it on the album that I'm getting y'all on for that, you know, this Hush yeah. Town Underground too. Someone was like, man, you can't do that. But I don't give a fuck. I'm going to put it out because that's my motherfucking yeah. beat. And I know that it got stolen. Man, I'm- if I found that one with me and Kiki, I'd put it out too. <laughs> Hell but, yeah. Man, I remember. And so if y'all, those of y'all don't know, every Wednesday for a certain time at Dope House, we would have... Uh, a thing called Scrooge Nights, and we right. barbecue and have like a basically like a party and, right. and invite everybody, everybody, anybody who wanted to come freestyle or exactly. come rap, you know what I'm saying, could come through on Wednesday. Yeah, and it was just like a screw thing, yeah. come and rap, and we were going to put it on a, a Scrooge Ten mixtape. A Scrooge Ten mixtape, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm and, saying? And uh, Tootie and them got Kiki to come one day, and we was flowing. I remember I had my, one of my, ha- half of my hair was braided, the other half was all froed out. I remember that. Remember? I remember that. I, 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 I remember half that was shit. Out and one half was I braided. I remember that I was shit. leaning, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was gone, and, and me, it was just me and Kiki on the mic going back and forth, back and forth yeah. about 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. That I do remember that man. That shit was fucking yeah. funny, man. Yeah, I yeah. never heard that shit. I never heard. I got pictures out. of because I used to do all the chicken. I used to cook all yeah, the chicken. Yeah, you, yeah. Man. Remember you? They they be like nobody could eat till everybody. I'd be like, man, Shadow, give me a piece of that chicken. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come on, man. I'm like, man, I ain't finna and, wait, man. And, and remember Sham? Remember yeah, Sham? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, so yeah. Sham. Remember Sham foot and all. That. So one time we was making chicken. I had some burgers on the side, and I asked Sham. I said, man, how you like your burger? Now, <laughs> <laughs> so for y'all that don't know who you talking about, Sham, it used to be a homeless dude that lived at the dope house. Yeah, and people would like pay him a couple of dollars to go do little random errands or whatever. He was related to Rashid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he was like, I, he wouldn't talk it, much. At nah, all. He, he was, was he, he was super talk, quiet dude. Super quiet. One time we was all smoking in a circle there at, outside at night. It was night. But they were smoking wet, you know what I'm saying? Oh, Fried. Shit. Shan goes and gets in the circle and is like, like ready to hit the weed, you know what I'm saying? They pass it to him, you know what I'm saying? But it was he wet. Take, wet. He no, a big old man. Man, don't know what he's smoking. And then he was that the night he crawled up on the top and he was like I don't like know. A bat? I, I, I don't know. I know that uh, he walked away, though, like not even 30 seconds later. He That shit will hit you, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Quick, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, you yeah. know, by the time you blow it out, you know what you happened. You know, y'all. Yeah. Shit. That nigga stepped away. <clears throat> he walked to the back, and I didn't see him no more. And I just heard him scream, ah, loud as like loud, like oh, a loud shit. person scream. Like yeah. he had to let that shit out. You know what I'm saying? And we was just like, damn, it's a wet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that dude was a mystical person, man. He yeah. he would slide up on you, and you ain't even know he. Was oh, like a ninja. Yeah, yeah, he was yeah. just like ease up. Yeah, he'd be right. 
what used to trip me out is I'd be out of town. I'd be in Laredo or someplace, and we outside the club after the show yeah, kicking pop it. Up on you. you just slide. <laughs> I, the fuck, Sam? Sam what you doing here? here? <laughs> the fuck? Yeah. I, but see, he was uh, he was related to Rashi. He came down uh, from Philly. From Philly. And uh, yeah, and 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 he stayed. Yeah, he stayed. He stayed, yeah. and he and he was homeless. And Rashid, you know, what I'm saying we all helped him out. And Rashid was like, ah, that's him. You yeah. know, what I'm saying and, and it wasn't nothing against you know nobody. In fact, he was family. You know, what I'm saying like like when he was there, he was family. Yeah, you know we would show him love every time I go eat. I always make sure I brought him back some food. You know what I'm yeah, saying? nah, like, yeah, go, yeah. Everybody did. Yeah. You know, what I'm saying yeah, yeah, he was cool. He was cool. He was cool. He actually uh, was there one night, and and, and his hot, his uh, mattress caught on fire. Uh oh. Yeah, and, we, and and I remember we was in there. What the hell is that? Smell? We in the studio, and the studio's on the other side. Yeah. Remember, he on the other side of the dock, and so we on the other. You know what I'm saying? We on the the, the side, whatever. And we was in the studio. And we're like, man, what's that smell, man? And then we started getting started getting thick. And then it started getting like foggy, and they're like, what the fuck? And here's Shannon. Hey, man, what? you know? And he because yeah. he didn't talk much. Yeah. I was like, damn, he the first time I ever, you know, what I'm saying yeah. he was screaming and hollering. But we went out and, and it was an open warehouse, so like there's nothing but metal and mm -hmm. wasn't no that much wood. So we ended up putting the fire out. You know, what I'm saying it was no big deal. The fire trucks didn't come out or nothing. But I remember that shit, man. He was all hurt because he didn't have no, he didn't have no mattress to sleep on that night. Yeah. So I ended, I think he ended up going to my brother's apartment saying he wanted to sleep over there. We're like, nah, I can't. Uh, oh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Don't watch it like nah. Yeah. Like, hey man, we uh, so we ended up getting some blankets and, and some pillows and stuff. You know what I'm saying and helping out. Mm -hmm. But I remember that man, Shan, Shan was something else, man. Yeah, Those man. are the real stories. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Fucking Shan, man. Sham and fucking dope fiend Willie. Dolphine Willie, man. Yeah. Dolphine Willie was a damn fool, man. He came by all the time. I'm the one that came up with Have You Ever Got a Body TV from Dolphine Willie. When we did that song, Wiggy, man, they did it on the way to uh, Dallas. Yeah. And they were coming. And I remember because Carlos wanted Wiggy to be a gangsta ass song. And Bash yeah. turned it into a. He's the one that made it Wiggy, Wiggy, Wiggy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we were on the way to Dallas. I think we were, gonna, we were going to the Omni. And, and and the whole trip we was coming up with different wiggies. Yeah. Know, and that's all they were doing all, all the, and I, I I you know, I, I told Bass that, hey, have you ever bought a TV from Dolphine Willie? Oh man, we'll yeah. Back down. yeah. So that was my little contribution. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I said, Oh, okay. So every time I heard that I was like, Oh shit, about <laughs> nine got it. I need to get paid, I'm gonna get my royalty yeah. line. You know what I'm saying? But nah, it didn't ever happen like that. But Dolphin Willie was another fool, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He would come up there with all kinds of shit. I remember one time he ride down, he had his bicycle and he had a big old uh chair. You know what it was like a like a like a, a like recliner. A it was a, yeah. it was a recliner on his bike, yeah. and I'm like, this fool right here, man. This dude was a trip, man. He yeah, come. he used to bring computers and all kind of shit up to the dope house, like they didn't work. Yeah, like what <laughs> what y'all gave me for this computer, man? Say, give say me, man. Give me two hundred dollars. <laughs> like Sam, bro, man. I got like I probably got like a dollar and some change. <sighs> All right, let me have it. <laughs> he gave me that computer. He gave computer for a dollar and some change. Yeah, yeah, he was something else, man. I don't know whatever happened to him, man. Uh, some people say that you know he fell out and stuff like that. that might, yeah, he had know. he had a he had a nervous breakdown or something. Is that what it was? Sham? Yeah, 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 he did. Oh, Sham or or F F no, Dolphin Willie? I don't know what the fuck happened to Dolphin Willie. No, I know Sham had a nervous breakdown. Yeah, Sham did. He yeah. like fell out or something. They had to take him to a hospital or something. Yeah, he went back to Philly, didn't yeah. he? Yeah, he did. His yeah. dad, his uh, brother or somebody came and got mm him. -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, Rashid's family is real, real. Uh, they were they were like I'm telling real you that, cool. that 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 lifestyle that if for someone that never seen that how bright how Carlos had it on like popping and balling so hard you know what I'm saying when he signed with Universal it was so much partying and so money much, and man. balling that somebody who had never seen that life can go into that and not want to ever leave you know what I'm yeah. saying mm -hmm. yeah and that's Hell, what it was. it was even Carlos Carlos would not want to go home and shit you know what I'm right, saying right, no shit. just stay out you know what I'm saying yeah, stay yeah. out there It'd be a even. Tuesday Wednesday night and this it was till the break of dawn you yeah. know what I'm saying yeah I mean like, were you there oh let me ask you this remember that time when when uh uh, D Town was there, and and uh, your partner came in the laws. Oh, we got raided. locked up. We got y'all. You and D Town got, 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 got locked, locked up. up. Yeah, man. I remember this, and I don't know. I was, cause I was trying to tell this story to somebody else, 
But you don't smoke weed. He don't smoke weed. You know what I'm saying? And somebody had some weed on there, and it was just only D Town and him on the dot. Mm -hmm. But it was the back dot. I, at that time, I did smoke, but that weed wasn't mine. You know what right. I'm saying? <laughs> so, so that that so what happened was, uh, my boy was in the front. And my boy was just wild, and he would just get on one and start shooting his gun in the air at yeah. dope house. You know what I'm saying? For no apparent reason, just go outside and be, ah, I'm shoot my gun. You know what I'm saying? So he did that. Well, there happened to be a cop driving down yeah. the street, and I guess heard the shot, and turned around or something. And then I just see my boy run from the front up to the back where me and D Town were standing, and run inside the studio. Yeah. He ran so fast, I didn't even realize who ran in there. Right. You know what I'm saying? I but just it saw was him. your boy. It was my boy, but I just saw him run so quick that I didn't even know who ran in there. Right. You know, we right. just saw somebody run into the studio. Me and D Town look at each other like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? And by the time we look back, there's hella cop cars yeah. just pulled back there, guns out, get on the ground, yeah. get on the ground. And they and they raided, and it was hot pursuit. They they had the, went but to they, get the him. studio was locked. So yeah, y'all locked. were in the studio? Were right. you in there? Yeah, I was in there. Everybody was in there, with, and they locked the door. So me and D-Town are locked out with mm. the cops right here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So they got us on the ground, you know what I'm saying? We laying down, and I'm thinking, like, I didn't do shit, so I'm going to be all right. You know what yeah, I'm saying? I didn't have nothing on me. But there was a sack of weed that was right next to where me and D-Town were laying down. Yeah. Right there on the little table yeah. there was a sack of weed. Damn. So they were like, that, that's y'all. So they took, they put me and him in the back seat and they waited until, how did they get in? Y'all ended up opening the door? Uh, uh, somebody ended up, okay, there was a, uh, it was it was Rob, it was me, it was Pain. D, the Pain. And then um, I, and I got here, yeah, I'm so bad with my memory, man, so I'm getting off. But there was another dude that was in there and he used to have dialysis. And I oh, forgot, Manuel. Oh, Manuel. And Manuel was there. And I think Manuel, not knowing, you know what I'm saying? You know, he was a humble dude. Yeah. He's the one that opened the door. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And and it was messed up because when when he opened the door, they grabbed him and they started getting his arm and yeah. they started and he was like he couldn't put his arm back there because that's where he get get dialysis. Yeah, and I told the cop, hey man, be careful with him, man. You know what I'm saying? He's he's he he gets dialysis and they were like they ain't wasn't here and that shit. Yeah. They would get your ass on the ground and then put me in the ground and they they actually got everybody outside and they put us all on the ground and we were we were handcuffed and I hear luck on the dock say man. This ain't my weed, man. Who's whoever's <laughs> weed this is need to come and get this, man. This and the whole time and the cops like, shut up, be quiet. <laughs> You going now, nah, man? Who's hey, this? Oh, hey, the man, news, I was remember the news ass, people huh? came. Yeah, the news people came and everything. So me and D Town sitting in the back seat, and D Town's trying to go like this because he had a shut him down shirt on. He had a shut yeah, yeah, shut him down <laughs> records. So he tried to show his shut him down shirt yeah. on the news, man. I'm sitting there with my head down. I'm like, man, I ain't trying to be on this damn news camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just thinking like, fuck that. I'm representing. You went to jail. I ended up going home, and I see the newscast, right? Yeah. And it was, and and when they did the newscast, they're sitting, you know, saying, and yeah, we're at the, they were at the dope house, and there was, you know, uh, you know, drugs, and you know, and they had this big old picture, you know, how they have in the back, and it had like kilos and shit like right, that. Yeah. And, and I'm like, Over and it was like a, it was a dime bag or yeah. a twenty sack of weed. You mm-hmm. know, what I'm saying they made it look like you know we had you know fucking you know. You know, cartel size shit. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was just like yeah. a bad. I weed. remember I didn't go up there that night. I wasn't there. I was at the house. The next morning, I'm fuck. I'm eating cereal or whatever. My dad's right there, and the news is on. And that shit come on. They start <laughs> showing the the story on the news, and they have these all the kilos, yeah, and yeah, really fucking shit. everything in the back. And my dad looking at me like, "Boy, <laughs> hey. what y'all do at that place?" <laughs> I'm like, no, nah, dad, you got, you got, no. Nah. Yeah, yeah, you know, man. but see, they sense, they centralize everything. They, they, they blow it up. You know yeah. what I'm saying? The media just like, you know, they blew it all up. Like, like it's a place and that wasn't house. even the first time when, when they raided it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But that's, mm-hmm. that's a whole nother thing. That span. was the time when I went to jail, though. For, yeah, that like was, that. I remember that. I remember you went to jail I, and d town went to jail and jail and he went to oh, jail. Oh, yeah, for, and he had uh, a blue bar. Yes, yeah, right. Yeah, he, they were, he yeah. was already he wanted. He was spending some time after mm-hmm. that. Yeah, he was gone for about two years behind that. And I think he was broken. He was talking to you about, you know, I don't know what y'all was talking about I, i'm sure he was trying to get you to get on something or something yeah we're outside talking about some music shit yeah, yeah definitely but, you know what i'm saying yeah i man. remember that night that it shit was quick bad. it did happen quick i was quick. like oh, fuck. i remember putting my head because i can hear him i started putting my headphones on so act like i'm working and shit. yeah you know what i'm saying i'm just waiting for the cops to come in and shit you know what i'm saying i remember that shit man don't open the door and they open the door anyway man mm. 
You know, yeah, recipes, I ended the rec- case, my recipes case ended manual, getting, man. By and recipes of detail. And detail. My, yes, my case ended up getting dismissed. Detail, he knew he had the blue one, so he just took the charges. Like, that was my weed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah, they ended yeah. up, I ended up getting out. Oh, of, for real? Yeah, my case got dismissed. Oh, shit, that's crazy. Yeah. I didn't know that. That's yeah. good. Too. That's funny. <laughs> Dope house stories, man. Yeah, and I was yeah. pissed the whole time thinking it was somebody else. But and then till I, oh my boy Winston, he ended Winston, up. Winston, that's yeah, Winston was. ended up. He got locked up too. Oh, that's right. Yeah, because when I got there, when I got in, when they booked me in, I see him sitting in the cell, and I'm like, nigga, that was you. He was like, yeah, that was me. I'm the one who took up, right? Man, yeah, man. Cause I didn't even know it was him. Yeah, Payne was upset, man, because that was that was a DFO studio. Yep. Yeah, Payne was the next day. We back. went back. We're like, Payne, where the gun? It's like, I don't know, I don't know. He tried to act like he didn't know where the gun was. Payne, where the fucking gun? You know you know where the fucking gun is. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. We, pay, we ain't leaving till you give us the fucking gun, man. <laughs> Wasn't Payne on probation too? He yeah, that's why he was yeah, mad. Right. He was yeah. mad. He was like, y'all can't be having guns over here. Y'all got yeah. the police coming. I'm on probation. Yeah. But uh, my boy had hit it in the ceiling. In the ceiling. Because yeah. we were still working on it. It was still being under construction. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there was still like different places where you could hide shit. And yeah. They didn't find that shit. Yeah. That shit was crazy, man. That shit was wild as fuck, man. <laughs> I remember that night, man. There's so many stories, man, that that, that that's why, you know, the pod, the thing that I'm doing, it's not a podcast, not a vlog. It's just more like me just, you know, getting with all the people that I know, you know what I'm saying, yeah. and, and, and hooking up with you guys and Filetto. And, and I hooked up with K Reno yesterday, you know, you know what I'm saying? I surprised this other guy, so... I mean, I just like doing it because everybody's just hitting me up. You know, and you, me you need to do it where you're telling your stories. You don't see. You don't want it to turn into like you. You are the interviewer, just interviewing, going around interviewing yeah. rappers. Yeah, because it could easily turn into if that. That's what you know happens. what I'm saying. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're right. Where you're just going around interviewing rappers, and that's not what you want. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Because that's not where you started. You started to tell your stories. Right. You know what I'm saying? So just make sure you continue to tell them stories. What happened? You're right. You're right. And I talked to my wife about it. My wife's my biggest critic. She's my muse. And she's like, nah, don't do that. And so I did a, a, a episode not too long ago, and it was just basically I went to my uh, um, archives. I started putting out, like, the real, the real, and the dats and all that yeah. stuff. And I sat by myself, and I was like, look, this is what I'm going to start doing. I'm just going to start telling you stories. I mean, it's going to be like me just telling you stories, and I'm going to pull out different things, and I'm going to talk about it. And I'm not going to talk about everything at once. I'm going to do one story at a time. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? One album at a time, kind of chronological yeah. order wise and 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 so it's it's it, you're right it's tough because you 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 start doing it and then it, it ends up being like okay you you're being an interviewer sitting down with Kay Reno and sitting down with these people yeah. and now I'm asking when I'm part of the story I mean that needs to be done too you yeah. know what I'm saying like I'm not knocking that you know what I'm saying cuz those people do need to get interviewed and their stories need to get heard too but at the same time, I don't think that's like your your job to do. Yeah, because it's you know too formal in that yeah. sense. Yeah, I just couldn't. I, honestly, I've been trying to do this for about two years. I had told Monster about it. I had met Monster a while back, and 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 uh, you used to be work with Monster mm-hmm. yeah, back. Yeah. And uh, he started showing me your stuff. You know, what I'm saying some of the stuff that I hadn't seen before. There was this one song that you did, and it was just you were just going off. I was like, God damn, that boy was cold, and so. Yeah. I started saying, and he was the one, he was like, man, you know, we should do the show together, and da, da, da. And I just started asking, I told him, you asked me the questions, and he's interviewing me, Yeah. and we were going to set it up like that, but Monster, he got busy, started doing all this stuff, and this year, is January, I had started on July last year, and I opened up, you know, you know, my YouTube channel, and we were going to start, but we never did nothing, we didn't even do not one fucking footage, yeah. so then January 6th, I just put the camera on myself. I really, I saw what you was doing. Yeah. I saw what you and Bling was doing, and I was so, you know, proud of y'all. And you, y'all worked, y'all did it, and you make it look easy. But I know it's tough. You know, yeah. it's, it's a lot of work. It's a, you know it's a job in itself. Yeah, vlogging every day, especially doing it every day. Yeah, especially doing it every That's day. That's a job. And I respected what you was doing. I actually said it in the beginning of the thing. I was like, man, I respect what Lucky's doing. I respect what Chingo's doing, and I'm gonna start doing it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And I think y'all want to hear these stories, and I started doing it myself. And then Monster called me the next day. He was like, I'm proud of you. And I was like, bitch, you're supposed to be helping me. You yeah. know what I'm saying? He's like, so he not, he's getting in. And I interviewed him. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's hard to get into that, to, to learn how to be comfortable just talking to the camera. Yeah. Like if it, the camera's a person that right. you're talking to. You know right. what I'm saying? Yeah, but, you're right. But once you get the hang of that, it'll be all good. You know what I'm saying? You'll be able to just tell them stories. Like You know what I'm saying? Like if you're sitting there talking to a person, but there's no one there. It's just right. the camera. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That's dope. See, it's like I'm gonna be fifty this year, 
uh, the the 30-year anniversary of, of Making Them Out of Worse is 2024, and I'm getting ready for all that. That's why I'm doing the book yeah. and stuff like that. And then I tell all my listeners, I tell all my followers and say, hey, look, man, I still learn shit. Like right now, yeah, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, hanging out. Never with, stop learning with you guys. You know what I'm saying? With uh, because like I think what I was special, what was special about our crew, and I'm not knocking any other record label or anything like that, but like we all fed off each other, mm, and yeah. and there was there was a mutual competition as everybody wanted to be co- go harder than each other. Yeah. But as far as like one person getting ahead of the other, nobody knocked it. It's like, you know, you would do everything you can to help that other person yeah. come yeah. up. Yeah. And and I think that's the kind of uh family that we have that you know that that is unique to, to any any other uh you know uh, SUC or yeah, or, yeah it you know, was, I think and, I, and I'm not that, knocking that, them. You know what I'm saying? I think that's just that that Mexican in us that we just you know yeah. what I'm saying we look out for each yeah, other. Yeah, yeah, you know you're saying? right, you're right. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. a good point. It really did feel like a brotherhood. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And even to this day, like shit, I I cut for everybody. Well, I ain't gonna say everybody, but I cut for a lot of those people, man. If 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 anybody ever needed anything from me, man, just because of the history, yeah, that we got together, yeah. And, it's true. Like that that, is, we we had some bonds. We a big bond, and we went through some shit that gave us those bonds. It's like there was a lot of times when there were sad times, and there mm-hmm. was there was mad times. You know what I'm saying? And 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 we don't forget those times. There was good times, and there was happy times, and glad times too. But there was a lot of hard. But times. But there was a there was more hard times, and a lot of people don't. I don't think you know know that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But there was a lot more hard times than there was the good times. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But I think that that's what gelled everybody together. We weren't a salad bowl. We were more like a melting pot. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's the way I look at it. Yeah. And I, and until this day, I learned things from you guys just by watching y'all. And, and, and you know, because y'all are younger than me. You know what I'm saying? And and what, what I tried to start back in the days, which is, it was a meaningful start. Like, my brother and I really did do this to start this. We weren't. We didn't just say, hey, let's just try to do this. No, we were really, like, that was our mind frame. We was like, no, nah, let's start this. I want, I ain't no, nothing against Black Rabbit. I say this all the time, but we wanted to do it way better than them. We knew we could do it just like them. We just wanted to do it better. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And we wanted to do it for our gente. You wanted to do it for the Mexicans. You know what I'm saying? And we yeah. did it in a way to where everybody kind of gravitated to it and I think that they took a hook on it and everybody started doing their own thing, which, 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 which is what we wanted. To this day, you know what I'm saying? Because when we were on there, we were the first, we were the only Mexicans. Yeah. I mean, you had Kid Frost, and you but had in Houston, but in, in Houston there was none. So yeah. when we put that now, you go to the record store or or you go on, you know, the the media, you know, social media. Look how many Mexicans. Oh yeah, you know what I'm saying? I I just in my in my archives. Dude, there was a stack of CDs. They're my homeboys. There was a stack of CDs. There was like, you know, Timberlands and all that. There was a stack of CDs of all the people that sent me shit. And they're all, if not still doing it, you know what I'm saying? That's how many mess. Because to me, seeing that, I was like, shit, yeah. I won. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I won. You know, look at look at how many people. The Coasts, the Luckies, and everybody. Yeah, I'm not there's saying. There's a whole bunch of young ones that came after me. You know, yeah. after me and Coast. You know what I'm saying? That are out now. You know what I'm saying? And doing their thing and representing the city in a proper way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So. Y'all yeah, were going to do it anyway. I, I tell people all the time. I said, yeah, I, I feel like I started this. But they're doing their shit not because of me. Y'all was gonna do it anyway. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, but I like the fact that but y'all, y'all let us know know that it was possible. possible. You know what exactly. I'm saying? Exactly. Yeah, that's that that's what done. we wanted to show. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I think we 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 conquered that. And just speaking of your character specifically, man, because so when I first started going around the dope house, there were certain people around there that I deemed were unapproachable for a nobody like me. Right. You know what I'm saying? I would go to the dope house and I see. Happy Perez over yeah. there doing his thing, and when I see Happy over there working, I ain't finna go. Yeah, fuck. right, right, <laughs> you know what right, I'm right, 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 right. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, same could be said with like Low G. I felt Low G was unapproachable. That, Russell Lee, too. Yeah. Any any fucking Lone Star Rider member, I felt right. was unapproachable. Yeah. Right, right. But you, on the other hand, you were like just open to yeah. what anybody was trying to do, yeah. and I, I. Ex- you have no idea how much appreciation I have for you. Yeah, I appreciate that for being yeah. the way that you are. Yeah, because you ain't had to be. No, nah. no. Nah. You know I, what I'm saying? I, I didn't. In fact, um, 
talking about that, the, I remember when Carlos put me on the payroll, right? He gave me two hundred fifty dollars a motherfucking week. Yeah. And he told me, "You got it. You got it." He would, wanted to drug test me and all that shit. Miss me with that shit, Carlos. <laughs> but but he said coming at nine to five, mm-hmm. and I told all the rappers back. It was kind of like right before the purity. Yeah. And this is how I got all those songs. I told everybody that was at the dope house, if you want to, I'll be here from nine to five. Whoever want to come into the Duke booth. I'll record you. I'll show you how to record. I will teach you everything that I know. Because that's how I was brought up. My grandmother told me, she used to be a chef, and she would tell me, Mijo, you can give out your recipe to anybody. They can't cook it like you. Yeah. So I was I I would I would do that. And I and, and I was approachable. I would make that approachable because I wanted more of it. You know, I was I was I was a fiend on music. Yeah. So the more the merrier for me. And and Big Rome, which is Juan Gotti, he yeah. lived, he was homeless. On the dot, yeah. and he started coming in, and he and he started learning his craft, and really that's when uh, like I started realizing, damn, you know what I'm saying? Like we got a lot of talent here, mm-hmm. and we need to like capitalize on that, you know, mm-hmm. not monetarily wise, but just on the fact of just recording. Cause see, it's it's easy. People don't understand. A lot of people talk about doing it, but doing it is a whole nother game. You know what I'm saying? So you got to go in the booth. You got to actually do it. But once you actually do it and you see, like you said, once you get comfortable with the camera yeah. and you see what you're doing, it becomes automatic. Yeah. And I and I was the type of person where I wanted more of it. And I and you're right, Low G. I was I I, I remember first meeting Low G. I was like, I didn't want to approach him because it was the same feeling. Mm-hmm. You know, it was a different world and to the point where I was like, I don't wanna be like that. I wanna be able to where anybody can come to me and, and let's work. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Let's get shit done, you know what I'm saying? And pain is the same way. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So we're we're cut from the same cloth. And, and and when you came, like you became the prince of of dope house within hours. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, I used to hang out at dope house, but no one would talk to me. I would try to get Rashid. Yo, I got this album I'm working on. Rashid would be throw me crazy. No, nobody mm. would fuck with me until yeah. after that follow my lead song came out. The whole page. Uh, within was, hours, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, this dude became was so he got love, the you know what key, to, key to the front door, and I was like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. And then when you came, you came, you came with quota. I didn't really knew who you were at the, at the first, but one thing I one thing I respected you for is because and 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 I don't you know if, if they still talk about it, but you had a beef with a a rap beef with the yeah, Gemini, that's right? What I told yeah. them too. And 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 you you killed it. You know what I'm saying to yeah. me, and I was like, "Oh shit, this dude is live." When I would hear something like a "Lucky" or I would hear your your, your lyrics, I'm not a lyricist, but I can. I'm a producer. I can hear something. I said, "Man, that shit's dope." You, mm. That's just you know unique. He has his own style. You have your style. You have your style. And when you know, when I started listening to you, I was like, "Damn, man, this dude. You know, he's got it. He just we just all need to be polished." Yeah. Right. So yeah, I just... didn't know what I was doing. I didn't even know how to count bars. Bert had to teach me what sixteen bars was because when I came in, I was I'm telling you, I was well, just you were doing eighty five bars straight, yeah. eighty six bars. I was straight. just straight flow, freestyle. I would not I didn't know what bars was. But I was like, what the you fuck had is a bar? songs. Oh, I came with songs. Yeah, you had songs. See, you was freestyling. You had yeah. songs. Mm, yeah. Nine, yeah. Yeah. Like it's some songs on that Twin Berettas album that I wrote when I was in 11th grade. Yeah. yeah. And I just brought them in my backpack with me yeah. to the dope house. Yeah. See, that's what I was used to with K. Reno having his black books. Yeah. yeah. So I was used to your your type of... He was a, a, a just a... Oh, man. I don't know. You just blew my mind, bro. It's like... <laughs> I, I don't even know how he does it. I, saw, I just recently saw a little freestyle you did. And, and I was just looking at some YouTube stuff. And I was like, damn, man. That's you still got that in you? Man. I'm pretty sure I haven't done it in a long ass time, but I'm, yeah, I mean it's like riding a bike, you know what I'm saying? Dude, <laughs> I've never been able to freestyle. Me, I can't even write or freestyle, but man, this dude right here, yeah. I was just this. I seen one the other, and then this other dude had grabbed him out. Like he was just gonna come in with you, and you was still going. And he was like, "Ah damn!" Man. <laughs> and you did, you know what I'm saying? And I was like, "Hey, it was just recent. It was like day before yesterday. I seen that. I was like, mm. this boy right here. I don't know how old that was. You know what I'm saying? Probably old because yeah, but I ain't been out in a minute. That's the difference between you. You was a freestyle monster and you came with songs written yeah and, and what you was talking about which is my favorite song was uh jezebel yeah you know mm-hmm. i'm saying on the twin berettas album that was my favorite song in fact i remember that uh that that uh 
what, what, there was a place that we used to go, and Carlos lost a, thousands of dollars off a boxing match. And I forgot it was De La Hoya against somebody. Mm. And and we went to that same club. It wasn't that night, but we went to that same club, and Fat Joe was with us. Oh, okay. Okay. And yeah. we was chilling, and we was playing pool and everything. And I was kill, I was chilling with Mach, and I was chilling with Joe, mm. and that song came on. Huh. And he leaned over to me and he was like, "Man, what the fuck song was that?" I said, "That's Jezebel." <laughs> yeah. I said, "You see that dude right there?" And it was you. You see that dude right there, Coach? That's his. Oh man, that shit is jamming. He 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 put it in my. He was man. I wish I had that song. He loved that song. Uh-huh. And and I remember that. I remember that. And Cause see, a lot of people are like, man, I met so many people, but I never took pictures with people. Yeah. I mean, back in the day, we used to sit in the back room. I met you know Ice Cube, Calvin Brodus, you know what I'm saying, Snoop Dogg, and I met all these. I, and I just shook their hand and, you know, said what's up, gave them a pound. I, you know, I think Ice Cube said it once, to shake my hand, nigga, and tell your bitch to come here. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. And, and that's the way I lived. You know, I was like, you know, he was a lynch mob. You know what I'm saying? I remember meeting them guys one time. They were all there in, 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 a, in a room upstairs. It was Public Enemy, Flavor Flav, Ice Cube with the lynch mob. They were mad at, you know, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Ruthless records. Yeah, yeah, NWA. And, and we were upstairs, and I seen uh, Flavor Flav, and he's watching himself on fucking MTV, and I'm just like, mm. what the fuck? Look where I'm at. Yeah. Trench was there with Naughty by Nature. Queen Latifah was a, it was a Willie D and the Dope Boys that, when they had that song, uh, uh, Minds Playing Tricks on me. Get that boys. Tour. Yeah. And all those guys, and it was at the Hilt. It was at, right there on 59. I'll never forget that Dope E took us, me and my brother. Wow. And we, and we sat in the room with all those guys, and... I didn't take not one picture. I didn't take not, you know, back then we didn't have phones like yeah. that. You know what I'm saying? I just chilled out. I just remembered the memory of it. You know what I'm saying? That's hard. You know what I'm saying? And and I'll never forget it. Never forget that shit. That shit was dope. So what's your what's your YouTube channel? Where can, where can people go to hear all it's your It's Shadow stories? the OG TV. Shadow the OG TV. Hit that subscribe. Hit that bell. Keep it notified. That way, you know what I'm saying, you can like all my videos, man. Oh. I got that down. Huh? Uh-huh. Got it down, man. He's doing better than you, Coach. <laughs> throw, that, on, throw, that, throw that Instagram out there one more time. That Instagram people. is Shadow the OG. At Shadow the OG. Yeah. Then, uh, so y'all follow Shadow. Y'all follow me at Cassette Coast. And it's lucky, baby. So I think, I think uh, we about an hour and 12 minutes into yeah. this now. So oh, Damn. Man. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Hey, time flies when you're having fun, man. But yeah. I've done a few of these with the uh, uh, I mean, three three hours long, man. You know no what shit. Saying? I got so yeah. many stories. But yeah. The stories just keep coming. It's like you said, you, you start talking, you start yeah. thinking about this and that, and that, and this. And, you know. Yeah, I know when you leave, I'm gonna be like, damn, I should have talked. I should have brought. Already, that. that always happens. <laughs> mm-hmm. That always happens, man. And I'm starting to write down. Starting okay. I, you gave me some advice. I'm gonna give you some advice, man. When you think of that, go on your phone. And just write and jot it in the notes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And put, you know, and put on the on the note, you know what I'm saying, brainstorm or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And that way you you when you like stop what you're doing. Like if you don't stop what you're doing, you you'll forget. forget. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you really gotta be like, hell, hold on, babe. Hold on, Kelly. Yeah. You know, and do your thing. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Man. And then and then go back to what you was doing. And then when, later on, say, oh, what was I thinking about? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then, and then that way you get your show. Already, your stories. Well, appreciate you coming through, man, man. I appreciate you having me, man. You know, for real, nothing man. but love, for real, man. For real, man. Nothing but love. Anytime, like y'all said, man. I'm working with Rebby Reb. You know, what I'm saying over there by my house with the hood fellas. We got a beautiful studio, beautiful Mike Olive over there. And uh, so whenever y'all want to record or whatever, we got a nice little booth. Yeah, we got the Avalon. We got it's legit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We got the legit shit. It's right there by the hood. Y'all need to come check out my house. You know what I'm saying? I'm in All paradise, right. man. All and right. we just, you know, we kick it, man. If anything, we don't even have to work. Like yeah. I said, man, we just chill. I don't know if y'all drink. You know I don't drink no more. I ain't drank. I ain't drank since uh, New Year's with this nigga, man. I got yeah. hella lit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I said, man, I can't be getting drunk like that, man. <laughs> but even if we I just was out for two days, chilling, man. Two, I had a hangover for two days. Oh God, yeah, man. Even, oh damn. I know. I can't be. My body don't heal the same. My liver is no more good, man. So yeah, man, I can't be drinking. I don't smoke no more, but but I do. Uh, I do drink, you know what I'm saying? I drink my little ultras because I'm on that keto, man. Yeah. And uh, but I but I got lit the, the other night, man, and I hooked up with K Ring on there, man. But I remember half the night. But I, good 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 thing I was not drunk when I was recording all the mm. shit that I was doing. Yeah. But 
Man, we gotta hang out more. I'm you know with it. I'm ready. I'm with it. You know what I'm saying? You out here too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's called some <laughs> gas money. You know what I'm saying? They can't catch a metro out here, man. Yeah, I'm way out here, man. <laughs> yeah, so, gotta stay away from that well, all that nonsense out gonna, there, man. You're you gonna go to the south. Cause go I'm two eighty eight Broadway. You know what I'm saying? South. I'm deep south. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Uh, already, man.